Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle that is apparently wonderful. It's by Michael Lefkowitz, um, who I think constructs under the name Juggler. Um, and we keep getting recommended <laughs> uh, Michael's puzzles. Um, this is one of the ones that's got loads of recommendations. There's another one as well. It's got a sort of miracle quality. And I only solved one of Michael's puzzles about a week ago. So this is a new constructor on the Sudoku block that is making great, great waves. And this puzzle is apparently genuinely approachable. So if you are new to Variant Sudoku, this is one that you should definitely have a go at, even though at first glance, I have to say, it's quite a surprise. It's quite surprising this is genuinely approachable when you look at the lack of clues. Um, but anyway, this is what we're going to have a go at today. It's called Hypertension, uh, which is about how I feel, uh, given the news about Jurgen Klopp leaving Liverpool, which is, as a Liverpool fan, since I was a wee boy, absolutely devastating. <laughs> I cannot tell you, a man, I really admire, not just as a manager, but as, as a person. Um, this is something that I think on the channel, we do espouse kindness and decency as much as we can. And I think Jurgen Klopp, uh, well, on many occasions, has made me proud to be a Liverpool fan, which is it's not always been the case in the past. So, uh, yeah, devastating news. Um, anyway, I must, I must move on from that. <laughs> I'll start to weep. Um, what can I tell you about? What else is going on? loads of things we had a crossword video on on the channel this morning as a bonus we're doing these friday master classes this one was a little bit different because not only did we solve the crossword um but also i was able to share with you this which is a this is thursday's times crossword but with all the definitions highlighted in yellow so if you are if you are new to the times crossword and you're wondering you've always sort of thought oh i'd like to get into cryptic crosswords but i don't understand how the clues break down this might help you although i will say it's a very difficult puzzle so even knowing which parts of the clues are the straightforward definitions might still make well this puzzle is still no pushover believe me um but anyway that's available uh um, find the crossword video that's the easiest way i'll put a link on the screen and you'll find it from there um other news over on patreon we are just days away from the new sudoku hunt by Riff Clown. The Sudoku Gallery is opening imminently. Here we go. <laughs> opening on the 1st of February. So hopefully you're all looking forward to that. That will, that will go live at four o'clock UK time on the 1st. Um, and what else did I need to mention? Was there anything else? Oh, birthday, Angela. Angela, it's your birthday today. I know this because your partner, Mike, wrote to us. Uh, apparently, we are told that you really enjoy the videos on the channel, but also the books, which is lovely to hear. Uh, I hope you've got your new book and I hope I hope it's it's ticked the box for you. Um, but Angela, many happy returns. And I hope that you have a very good celebration day with, of course, an amazing chocolate cake replete with the correct ratio of icing to cake, which is one to one. Um, and with that, why don't we turn our attention to doing some solving? And I can hear Maverick. I've had the window open today. Well, well, after it cooled up, after it heated up from earlier. Um, and Maverick has been flying around like crazy this afternoon. Anyway, these are the rules to hypertension by Michael Lefkowitz. We have got normal Sudoku rule supply. So we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. Then we've got a rule called silent killer. Digits in a cage sum to the number in the cell pointed at by the cage's northwest corner. Digits cannot repeat in a cage. And okay, there's an example which I'm thankful for because when I read the rules of this before I turned on the webcam, I, was, I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't certain I understood what that meant. So it says example, row one, column two, uh, row one, column two, shows the sum of the upper leftmost cage. So what that's saying is that this cage here yeah, and it's because the, the, the northwest corner of this cage is pointing at that, that, cage, that cell there. So this cell has to contain the sum of those three orange digits. Uh, let's do another one. So these two cells here are going to, obviously the top left-hand corner is going to point at this, this cell. 
So that cell, the blue cell, will contain the sum of those two, uh, those two green cells there. And then we've also got silent little killer clues, which means a cell with an arrow shows the sum of the digits on the arrow's diagonal. So these digits here, uh, let's make those orange. So we add these up and whatever we get, we have to plonk into the green cell there. It's lovely, isn't it? Very simple idea. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, the first, th well, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is some due diligence. I am going to notate all of the cells that are pointed at by cages. That's probably a sensible thing to do, isn't it? Let's try that. I think all of those are in the northwest corner of a cage. How many cages have we actually got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I should have seven, and I do. I've got seven purple cells. Um, but if you actually look at the structure of all of the cages, the only one, the only one that definitely has three digits that can't contain a repeated digit is this one, because this could have repeated digits in it, as could this one. Now we know that this number must be at least six, because the minimum we could put into these three cells would be a one, two, three, triple. So that's definitely at least six. Okay, and we're probably actually going to have to have a look at the the diagonals, to be honest. This one looks the most propitious to me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so that's, well, that's more than six because those have to be different. In fact, let's work out the minimum of this diagonal. One, two, could put a one there. Couldn't, ah, hang on, that one. Well, that one's at least three because that's a purple cell. And what I was thinking there is I could make the minimum I could make this cage add up to would be to put one and two in it, which means the minimum value of this purple cell is three. But that could be a one again. Uh, seven, eight. Oh, OK. So this is this is this is the break in look, because if, if we now I put the absolute minimum I can into all of those squares with this being a one, two pair and the. The overall result of that is that you get nine. So that must be the answer, because if we were to increase any of these digits by even one, this would be a 10. And a knowledge bomb for you, 10 is too big to go in a Sudoku, well, at least in this Sudoku. Um, so actually, we get loads of stuff from that, don't we? We get loads of stuff. Ah, not only that, but if that is three, this is a one, two pair. And that's going to settle this one, too. So we, we get the whole diagonal done. That's lovely. Um, Right, and therefore, well, I'm tempted now. This one, this one looks interesting because we can actually see those two digits have to be the same number, don't they? Because this diagonal is pointing just at one cell. But also, this diagonal, it's going to have, well, that cell's a minimum of two, but this cell's interesting because it sees one, two, and three. So that's at least four. That's at least two. And that means that this square is at least eight. Uh, it's eight or nine. Oh, that's lovely. It's just, it's, it's just elegant, isn't it? Because now, well, we can say immediately, this cannot be nine. Because if it was nine, it would get transposed here and see itself in, in, in a column. So that can't be right. So this is all fixed as well. That's got to be two, four, two and minimumed. Um, eight has to be down here by Sudoku now. How many ones have we? Had? Well, we have got loads of ones in the grid. It is quite outrageous, Michael, that you're making me do Sudoku so early, so early on in your Sudoku puzzle. But that seems to be um, what I'm required to do. Twos, maybe we can do. Yes, there is a two down here. So this is actually a one two pair at the bottom of column nine. And we've got a two over there. Whoops, I have to put that into the corner of the box. Two, two down here. That can't be a two because these squares must add up to at least, well, I was going to say at least four. I think that's right, isn't it? That could be a one and this could be a one, two pair, probably. So I, I think that might be at least four. Um, We've only got one three and one four so far. Where's nine in the... Ah, all right, where's nine in this box? 
Nine can't go in the cage, can it? Because it, the cage is summing to a whatever the sum of these two digits is, we have to put it in the purple cell. And I can't put 11 in the purple cell. So there's a nine in one of those two squares and a nine at the top of column eight. Um, hmm. Okay. Now it's getting more tricky, isn't it? What should we do next? <laughs> um, that digit and that digit are the same. Uh, can we do something with this cage, maybe? That's got to be at least a four. And that's got to be at least a two. So this square, I think, is seven, eight or nine. Two, three. There's all sorts of little relationships going on. That square is at least a three. Um, because it sees one and two in its box. That square, oh, that's, nah, hang on, that square's at least three. I didn't see that. That square's at least a three because it sees one and two. So that's at least a three as well. Oh, so this is fixed. Sorry. Look at this. This diagonal is totally forced because the first two digits on it can't be less than three. And obviously the final two digits have to be different from one another. And three, double three plus a one, two pair adds up to nine. So that, that so this is forced. Now, okay, I see. So that place is nine by Sudoku in box uh, in box six here. One is in one of two places in box four. Now three is in one of two places, but this can't be a three because if this was three, this would have to be a one-two pair, and there's already one in the box. So three goes there. And that means, well, it means, th oopsie, it means three is in one of these two cells. Can we work out which of these is one and one or two? I don't think, I don't think we can. I might be, ah, what we can do though is a little trick re re regarding twos. So we can see there's a two in one of these squares and a two in one of these squares. So the question we could ask now is how is where's the two in row nine? Because it can't be here and it can't be here. And we know this is a one two pair in box nine. So the two in this row can only go there. If we try and put a two here, this couldn't be a one two pair. So the two goes in the whoa, I didn't mean to do that. The two goes in the corner and that's a one now which means that's, oh, I see, that does the one and the two over here, which gets me the two here. And that gets me the one here. Very nice. So we've done very well. Ah, that's a one now by Sudoku. This is not a two. How many ones have we got? I feel like we've got loads. We've got all of them. How many twos have we got? Most of them. Oh, nearly. We've nearly got, nearly got them all. We've got a little X-swing of twos up there. Um, okay, well, here's here's a little trick. Oh, in fact, I'm seeing all sorts of things now. But but this has to be a two, I think, because if this was not a two, these two squares, which can't be one or three, would be at least four and five. And four plus five plus one is ten. And I can't write ten into this square. It's gorgeous. It's really it's not difficult. It's just very well put together. Uh, I've just done that the wrong way round. <laughs> Having concluded that this had to be a two because it couldn't be a four or five pair, I then put the two there. That's not sensible. Don't do that. You'll get the puzzle wrong. Um, that still hasn't improved our knowledge about row one, column two, I don't think. Although whatever that digit is, I suppose, okay, the highest that digit can be is six. So the highest that digit can be is six. So that's got to be four, five or six. Whoops, and that's got to be four, five or six. And that square, this, oh, this was the other thing I saw. If we look at this, this cage here, it can't have a one in it. So it, it must add up to nine because the digits have to be different. And if you add up two, three and four, you get nine. So we can't add any more than two, three and four in here. So that becomes a four. And is that do well that's doing a little bit that that gets rid of 
Uh, that gets rid of seven up. Oh, look, 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 look. That's lovely. It does two things. So the first thing it does is it knocks four out of here, which means this can no longer add up to seven. But the nine just being here takes nine out of there as well. So that is eight, which means this is five by mathematics. One, two, and five add up to eight. Um, and that's very important for the following reason. Come on, brain. Come up with a reason. Um, ah, not got not got a reason yet. Can we do? Can we do anything with eights? Yeah, we can do an eight there. We can do an eight in one of these two squares. So we can do an eight in one of these two squares. Do I know what this is? Oh, it's the same thing. Look, there's a one looking at these two cells. Um, so this must be a two, three, four triple adding up to nine. And that's probably, I think, going to give us... No, oh, I thought it was going to give us all our nines. It might do, actually. Uh, no, we, we, know, we know much less about nines at the top of the grid than I thought we did. Um, but it does give us a nine in box seven, just using plain old Sudoku. This we know, well, that we know that's not eight. This is a three, four pair. And somehow we don't know the order because we don't seem to know anything about threes and fours up here. Um, that square is at least a four. And four plus two is six. So this is a six or a seven. And this is a four or a five. That's probably important for the following reason. Where's where's five in box two, actually? These two fives pinch an awful lot of cells that could otherwise have been five. So five goes in the purple, which means this, this adds up to five. So that's got to be a three. Oh, that's lovely. So that does the three and the four at the bottom. How many threes have we got? Yes. Oh, yes. Look. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, very nice. Now, so now we've done all the threes. We did. We did all the twos. We did all the ones. Let's try fours. Oh no, fours are terrible. Uh, okay, there's a four in one of these two squares. Why is this square highlighted? Oh, that was me highlight highlighting where twos could go. So that's probably fine, isn't it? Um, where else could we do? What else could we do with fours? Four is in one of two cells in box three. So it's in one of two cells in box one. And this is going to be a case of where I've, I've just ignored clues. <laughs> um, probably. I can see I've not done this clue. Is that the, is that the one arrow I haven't looked at yet? Oh, this! Ah, oh, that's gorgeous. In fact, look at this clue. What's this digit? And it sees one, two, three, four, and five. So it's at least six. But it couldn't be seven. If it was seven, seven plus double one is nine, and we can't write nine in there. So we have to write eight in here. We have to put six in here. But that gives us another eight for free in box five. And what's that six doing? Anything really useful? Well, it's giving me a six in one of these two. It's giving me a six exactly here. So a seven in the column we can place. And this is a six nine pair by Sudoku, of all things. And now these two squares have got to be four and seven. I'm looking at that expectantly, uh, but it doesn't seem to want to resolve itself. Um, okay, what have we got to put in? We've got five, five, seven, oh, eight's got to go here. Okay, so perhaps we just focus on Sudoku for a little while. How many eights have we got now? Well, when I put this one in, we've got all of them. This is a five, seven pair. Whoopsie. There we go. These squares are five, six, and seven. Let's put that in and see if we can do any better. Ah, okay, where's five in column seven? It can't go here at the top, look, because of this five, so it must go there. So that's five, that's seven, that's six by Sudoku. Can we do, have I done all the nines? No, no, I haven't, very much not. Actually, it doesn't look like nine is the next digit to me. 
I think we're going to have to look somewhere else. So we've got this clue, which is undone. But I think we've done everything else that's that's easy. So how do we finish this off? There's a six in one of these. That digit's quite easy to work out. That's got oh, that's very helpful. Look, that column gives me a seven. So that's a six now, which means that's a four by maths. This is a five seven pair that may not be resolved, but presumably that's going to be helpful. We need four and six, so we can put four in the corner up here. Six goes there. And okay, we know. Yeah, so six in this box. There's now a four six pair that we've sort of discovered. That places the nine here, places the six here, places the nine here, places the nine here. These are a five seven pair, which which is now resolved. The five needs a seven over here. That does the seven and the five. Um, five in box four can be placed there. Six can now be placed. That does the six and the four, and the four can go in. The five and the seven. I think we're finishing off now, aren't we? I think it's nearly finished. Uh, this is a six. So this should be four and seven. Ah, why is that not resolved? Okay, it's going to be resolved by this. And that should be a five. And we are just double, double checking before I click tick. I think it's right. Beautiful. What a beautiful puzzle that is. 400, whoa, whoa, whoa. 400 people have solved that in one day. Wow, well, I'm not surprised it's been recommended a bit to us. That is clearly a very, well, it's very popular. It's had a lot of attention. And this is this is the reputation, I think, that Michael's building for himself. It's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant setting. Because that's it's enjoyable. At the start, it didn't look easy, did it? And yet it had a really nice flow. All the deductions felt very natural. And if you had, even if you hadn't seen variant Sudoku before, you might have learned some really, really nice points. Like if you can't put a one in a three cell cage, it always gonna, it's always going to be two, three, four. Yeah, chapeau, very enjoyable. Let me know in the comments whether you had a go and how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.